Welcome to Bike Social, I'm John and this is the 2021 Yamaha Tracer 9 GT. I've just got back from a 450 mile tour on this thing covering every type of road England and Wales has to offer and as you'd expect in early May there was plenty of wet weather testing. Stick around to find out all about the comfort, performance, economy and more but with its increased low capacity there's no doubt that the new Tracer wants to be a capable tour up tourer. So let's find out what my pillion thought before we get into my feelings about it. Helen, 150 miles we've just done on a new Tracer 9 GT. A uh, bit of background, we've got an S1000XR, haven't we? Yep. Which, um, you know, quite an aggressive bike. Uh, we bought it after doing one of these pillion opinions. Because um, we had a Versus 1000, we took out the S1000XR and you wanted it. I, uh, before I ask you how you, what you thought of this, I've got to say, I have never known you as relaxed and happy on a bike as you were today. So why? <laughs> well, as soon as I got on this bike, I just loved it. I felt yeah. really relaxed. I didn't care about um, the acceleration. It didn't make my stomach go up. I just loved it. Just loved it straight away. Yeah. Yeah. And I just felt relaxed, comfy. I think uh, the comfort is due to three main elements. The seat's nice and wide mm. and comfy because I have, as a yardstick, I have like the hour rule that for the first hour, every seat is comfy. And then after that, um, you know, you start getting numb bum and, and whatnot. But I haven't all day, I've been on it all day t yeah. today. And um, and it's been absolutely brilliant. And presumably that peg height has been a big difference to this. Yeah, so sorry, so that's the first <laughs> Yeah, you point. said one, yeah, three, three points, and then I just said the same one. <laughs> Guess at the other two. So I also like the fact that the um, the your your legs hang down quite long. The peg mm. distance is I'm five three, I'm quite short in the leg, but it was a really nice position. I felt like my legs were nice and relaxed and straight all day, so I didn't get the usual achy knees that I usually moan about. Yeah. Um, and uh, the grab bars are really um, comfy grab rails, as well, yeah. grab, grab rails. Well, if yeah. it, when we were, you were holding the 360 camera for a while, weren't you? So mm. you were quite relaxed and you yeah. didn't seem to... I loved it. Yeah. I now don't... Uh, if, if, you, if, if you said, do you want to go on a tour of this or your bike, I would... I'd want to go on this. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm really fickle, but I prefer this one. It was. It's so low and so easy to ride. Yeah. There were times when th there were some really nagery bits. I really enjoyed this ride. It has been absolutely brilliant because it's, it's rained. It's been dry, but they're Welsh roads made for rain. And but there were some bits really, really tight, weren't there? Uh, and I, I was on there thinking, I'm glad I'm not on my XR because I was, I was thinking, I can't stop. I cannot stop. If I'm on the XR, if I stop, I'm going to fall off because I'm on tiptoes on that bike. And this has made me think, mm. should I look into getting that lowered? But it's also made me think, should I have this? And I know. <laughs> so clearly this isn't the bike we've been riding today. No, <laughs> no, it's just, yeah, we had, we were on a red one. That's a lot dirtier than this now, but we did have a top box. A top box is. Yeah. We, yeah. We, I haven't tried it with a top box. Without, without a, top a top box. box yeah. I haven't tried it. But you, you weren't, you know, it'd be no different. You, no. You've got plenty of space on there but you know you, you're there with the top box um i'm lucky enough we actually end up we're going to be taking one home and it's going to become the long term for this year's my long term so you're going to be getting installments of this everything we're going to be doing with this and find out what this is really like in the same way as done before and the, my worry is it's happened before <laughs> yeah <laughs> we've tested they stuff quite, like, fickle so it is going to be really by the end of this we're going to be saying is well, this before, what we want to change before to? you um before you bought your bike the name of which I can never remember. Yes, that was an XR. Yeah, that. Um, my favourite pillion bike was the uh, Versus. Versus 1000, yeah, because we yeah. had that long term, That was we? really, really comfy. Yeah. We went down to Devon in that. I was on it all day. It was really comfy. Mm. And then um, the BMW was just kind of a bit more exciting, which is why you ended up buying one. Yeah. Um, but this bike is, I think, um, better than the Versus. Yes. So, so then it elevates it above. Yeah, BMW. from my point of view, it's... It's more, ex I mean, I'm looking forward to getting some real good back road, scratching around with this and have some fun with it on my own as well. Um, but it's got more excitement than the, Ver I think the Versus was a brilliant bike, but this is more exciting. It's easier to use. It feels light, it's low. The Versus was more manageable. I mean, I had that time when I fell in the yeah. ditch. Yeah. <laughs> the 
there you? were a couple of times, like when the rabbit ran, um, rabbit, <laughs> when the sheep <laughs> big ran rabbit. out. Big yeah. rabbit. Yeah, the big rabbit that looked like a sheep ran out in Dartmoor, I think we were, weren't we? Yeah, and you yeah. like, and there was, a, and that wasn't the only time you wobbled no, just because of its height. Yeah. You lost your balance. Yeah. It. So even though that's nothing to do with me as a pillion, I was kind of aware of the fact that you weren't a hundred percent secure on that bike because we'd be in traffic in towns, things like that. If there was a slope or anything like that, I could feel you. Yeah. You know, I'm not quite balanced. Yeah, I mean, I'm not the most. Typically on launches, I'm the slowest there. I'm not the most confident rider. I'd say I'm a fairly average rider. Um, but with this, I can get my feet. Can put, in fact, I can stand up off the seat. Mm with my feet down. Um, so, I'm so I'm still rubbish at turning it around the road. Yeah. I have to get me, but yeah. it's, it gives me a huge amount of confidence. But yeah, it's, I'd say it's more exciting than the Versus, which is a wonderfully big, comfortable bike. It's not as exciting a motor as the SSXR, but then the SSXR is like 165 brake horsepower. This is 117.3 brake horsepower. Yeah, that's still what got I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> And I did notice that there was a couple of times when we opened it up and you are like, Ooh, mm, mm. Uh, you know, it wears the XR. Like, bop, 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 bop. Mm. But then when we were, we were chatting on the intercom, weren't we? And you're like, I prefer this because yeah, it the, doesn't the, the frighten X, me. Yeah, you said the XR's too fast. So, well, the XR's only as fast as I go on it. <laughs> this, it, it's I just more really enjoyed myself today. We've been we've been out all all day. The weather's been quite um, challenging. Yeah. So we've hit heavy yeah, but, rain. It's just been really comfy. There's never been a point where I've been like, oh shit, uh, this has all got too much. Mm. Um, but there were there were a couple of times when I was felt for the people behind us, like when we were going down that. I think it was on the Hell's Pass yeah. thing. We went down really steep and it was just like sheep mm, yeah, poo and stuff. mud. Just on mm. the bottom turn, I basically stopped. <laughs> but it, it's, I mean, it's, this now comes with Bridgestone T32s, the tyre, we, you know, we've had torrential rain, we've had dry weather, tyres have felt great, nobody's had any problems. Mm. Um, brakes felt fine. I, I know if we, we've already seen the launch report of this, Kev Raymond did it for us and he commented that the brakes aren't sharp, like the XR brakes are, and I'm not comparing it to the XR as if the XR is far more expensive bike, it's a larger capacity, it's a different machine, but I think it's a realistic comparison because it's kind of things that you and I own. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the brakes are kind of, they need more of a pull, but they're progressive, they're still confidence inspired. It's got a new uh, radial master cylinder on it. The engine is, it's got a real character to the engine. It feels rougher in a way, I think. Uh, it's got this kind of rough feel, but a, a good character rough feel. It sounds fantastic. Euro 5 we're on now, and people always are, oh, this Euro rubbish. Still sounds brilliant. I mean, I think for people, as we're going through the videos, I don't think we were annoying anybody, but it's been so well tuned to make it feel good to us. And with the quick shifter, up and down quick shifter works so well. You don't even need to tap it down. And uh, it gives a lovely, uh, pop. Uh, yeah. I'm really, really impressed with all of that. Suspension, it, uh, this is a GT. So this has got semi-active suspension, which BMW has got as well. Um, it's been really good. I, I've found, I don't normally like semi-active suspension. I've ridden too many bikes where I haven't really enjoyed it. It's felt like it's either got really wallowy and bouncy, like it's almost turned the damping off, or it's felt a bit vague, like I don't really know what's going on. Whereas this has just worked really well. We, I've had this in mode one, which is the most aggressive right, driving mode, which still isn't ridiculously aggressive. Mm. And mode one suspension, I had it in a lot of the time. It feels, a, there's mode one and two suspension. Feels a little bit harsher in mode one, as you'd expect, but still with us on it, it felt good. There, were, there was a time we got quite fast uh, and we were overtaking it, it was getting quite real like sweeping bumps. And I felt it kind of get into a bit of a wallow and then I put it into mode one, that was when we were in mode two. Uh, brilliant. And it just works. It doesn't feel, the Tracer's, is, the Tracer's not a budget bike by any stretch, but it, it's often been, quite a good value, relatively good value bike. It doesn't feel cheap. I, I'm having to really pick holes to find things where I go, yeah. well, yeah, like the insides of the handguards where you can see the molding and the and stuff. But then again, they're really nice solid handguards. The heated grips work great. The, the uh, I wish it had electronic preload adjustment. It's a, it's a no, you don't care about any of this no. stuff, do you? <laughs> <laughs> These people might, Helen. Uh, it's a remote preload adjustment. I've been winding ours up over time. When we first stopped, we was, it was down a hill and slightly kind of down and turned. And um, I think it was 
Joe behind the camera had to put the side stand down for us. So I couldn't find yeah. it because I hadn't put it down since we pulled away. Well, I hadn't put it down at all. We'd ridden off from Tamworth. I thought, I can't find it. And I couldn't lean over <laughs> enough. So, but why in the preload? That was the only point where I noticed that with you on the back, the sag was enough that I couldn't get the side stand up. So I just wound the preload up. But that's what really shocked me. I know um, Yamaha was really keen for me. You know, it's great that they've let us come here, both of us do this. But they were quite keen for me to ride on my own. But I haven't. Uh, there hasn't been a point where I've thought, actually, I need to do that road without you. Because we, we've had some, you know, wet roads as well. But there was a really lovely fast sweeping st stretch in the bone dry. And I don't think I would have gone any faster without you on there. The bike didn't feel upset. And I think because it's relatively low, it, doesn't, it didn't feel like you were up high. It didn't feel like the bike was wobbling around. It didn't, it didn't feel overbalanced or top heavy. Um, comes with the panniers. Uh, I didn't realise it with. came with them. Yeah, yeah, the GT comes with the panniers. Oh, so right. the GT is £12,202. That includes the panniers. Um, and uh, quick shifter, semi-active suspension, heated grips. The top box is an optional extra, and that's something we've, you know, we've got added. Uh, but, yeah. I don't want to always appear gushing about bikes. No, but... And, uh, you, you're, you're very clear of bikes, aren't you? We, we went on the Intercept 650, which I, I love that Is that, that the one I didn't like? You hated it. Oh, yeah, I hated that one. <laughs> That one gave me bad back. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't like all bikes, not by any stretch. Oh. I see good things in them, but some of them, you know, I think this is just brilliant. Just really enjoy myself today. And that's all you can say, can't you, as a pillion? You should be able to just relax, look around. Yeah. Um, enjoy all day in the saddle. And uh, I think that's it, what I've done. when you're enjoying it, I'm really looking forward to getting this out, especially on the local roads around us that I know. Yeah. Uh, and going out on my own and finding out just how good it is as a scratching around bike. Because there's a lot to be said as well for a bike that isn't stupidly powerful, something you can rag a bit harder. Mm -hmm. uh, and this certainly isn't underpowered by any stretch, but something that... Some bikes I get home and it's like the bike's going, is that all you've got? Is that it? Well, you know, <laughs> I'm, a waste of, I'm wasted on you, aren't I? But I like it when you get back and the bike's going... Bing, 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 yeah, yeah, like, like, like panting. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah. Um, but I, it is really important to me that we can enjoy a bike together because it's very rare that we get the chance to go out. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, we've got daughter and we're... You know, it, it's difficult to kind of do that stuff. But when we do get opportunities to go out together, I want us to enjoy it mm. the same. And the thing for this is I feel like more confident. We've been kind of knocking the idea around for a while of going to Belgium and it looks like hopefully things might start to release and we'll be able to do something. But even exploring around the UK more. Yeah, because I haven't really explored this No, I, I feel much. like a drop, you know, I could ride anything and go somewhere. But I feel like with this... I'm not as frightened of stopping on a <laughs> slope or in a gravelly track. I'll still make a bodge of turning it around, <laughs> but but I, I've I've been really impressed. Yeah, really really enjoyed today. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and sure it, and it's wound up in a theatre. <laughs> 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 Win. I'm just gonna have a look at my notes. Hang on a second. Uh, I've, I've found the Are fuel. Are we droning on? <laughs> How long have we been? I don't know about. About half an hour? No, I don't know. <laughs> we haven't. You've been uh, 12 minutes and 30 minutes. Okay. No, not too bad. We've probably wrapped it up, but so I'll just cover a couple Absolutely of more things. no problem at all, guys. The, the I'll just drink beer. <laughs> Cheers. Fueling I've found on it, especially as we've gone through Euro 4, there was a few bikes that they, they've got lean, <laughs> more and more lean. Again, this is something other people will be interested in, not you, Helen. Yeah, I just drink all my beer, though. <laughs> That's a good look. Yeah. Uh, the fueling sometimes, when they've got more and more lean, you, as you roll off, it gets really like snappy. Um, the quick shift of a start has stopped you bashing into me, hasn't there? Yeah, um, I haven't smacked into the No, your there was one helmet. point when we were going over that aqueduct. Yeah, but I think dam. I was leaning forward because I was fiddling. You were holding the camera and I shut off quick. Uh, I wanted it to sound good as we went past um, Joe and James for the cameras. Mm -hmm. But uh, you rolled forward a bit there. But otherwise, a quick shifter stops you. Because a lot of people say, oh, there's no point in a quick shifter off the track. There is. It's absolutely brilliant, especially with a pillion. Mm -hmm. It smooths out the ride. But yeah, the fueling, it's got a um, heavier crankshaft in this and it, it's got a nice roll off, except I found in first at low speed, sometimes you roll off and it'd just be a bit snappy. But that was in mode one, not so much in mode two, full ride, driving mode, riding modes. Um, mode one, two and three, uh, full power, but it just, the, it's more progressive the way the power comes in. Mode four is a uh, reduced power output as well. And that's like riding with fewer cylinders. Uh, but overall, it just, 
works. Yeah. We go, we're going to be doing a lot more with this, obviously, and I've got a lot more work to do with it, you know, and, and I'll, it'll be the same, lots of instalments of covering absolutely everything on this bike. Yeah. Uh, but first impressions, I'm impressed. Yeah, mm. really like it. You're yeah. impressed? Mm. <laughs> Has the moaning pillion, See thumbs them. up. <laughs> like it. So we shot that at the end of the first day's riding through Wales, where we stopped at the amazing Nick Sanders Expedition Centre. Honestly, if you get the chance, you must visit because Nick and his wife Caroline really do look after you. And the locally sourced and homemade food is beyond five star. Anyway, the next day we covered another 300 miles and at the end of it all, Helen was still just as enthusiastic about this Yamaha as she was in that clip. Now I tend to ride near the back on most launches and with Helen on board, I didn't want to push it. But she wanted to see what it was like up front and we ended up directly behind the lead rider, which was ex-MCN editor Mark Potter, and he is proper rapid. And needless to say, he wasn't riding at anything like the pace he's capable of, but we were not hanging about. I'd have been pleased to have been keeping up with him on my own, but it's a real credit to this bike that I was doing it with Helen sat on the back. Riding like that with a pillow, I'll often see a bike starting to get itself knotted up a bit, but the tracer just wasn't phased at all. In fact, Helen and I did some touring on a phase a thousand years back, and there's no way that would have handled that ride in. Helen reckons that's one of the most memorable rides she's had, and she does mean it in a good way, not because she got scared silly. That section wasn't what Tour Up Touring is about though, of course, and most of the two days were spent by the way Helen and I would normally ride, but it proved just how well set up the new Tracer is. The luggage wasn't rammed, but I did have a lot of weighty camera kit in the top box. With the preload raised a little using the manual adjuster, I, I do wish that was electronic, but with that set up, the bike handled perfectly. At speed, I stuck with the firmer Mode 1 on the suspension, but on slower, more sweeping roads, I dropped it back down to Mode 2. You can switch the riding mode, suspension and traction control while you're on the go. You just need to be off the throttle and not using cruise control. Of that 450 miles, I did about 120 on my own, and while I still think this thing is outstanding, I did have a couple of misgivings. And with the economy, on the ride with Helen I saw averages between 43 and 47 mpg, so for normal riding two up, 47 seems pretty realistic. And with this 18 litre tank, that'd get you about 185 miles. And you probably noticed that this isn't the red, well, red line tracer that Helen and I rode. This is an Icon performance colour scheme, they, they all cost the same. But it's one that the, one of the support riders was on, riding solo. Now I bought this one home because it's going to be our long-term test bike this year, which means you'll be able to follow everything we do on it. Anyway, this has done 49 miles per gallon when I got it, uh, and that equates to about 194 miles, so I reckon that if you take it easy, you could just about get over 200 miles before you have to push this thing to a pump. Now, that's a fair distance without getting off, and at the end of the 300 miles second day, my bum was aching. This isn't the most comfortable saddle I've ever been in, but it's definitely not the worst. And I would say it's also better than the previous model, at least from my bum. And I did try the optional comfort seat. Both of us found it firmer, but neither of us really preferred it. The screen's a tricky one. For most of the ride, I got on well with it, though a couple of other riders on the trip did find it noisy. It was only on the motorway that I really noticed that, but it's gonna make a big difference how tall you are. I'm five foot 10, and with the screen at the top position, which is there, if I rode in a bit of a slump, it was quiet and still. With it pulled up, I also got more air in my lid as it found a way under the bottom. With the screen down, that disappears. Now, to be honest, for back road riding, I'd like to have seen the option of a smaller screen so I could get more control of the air flying around my lid. Maybe one of the aftermarket manufacturers is gonna make one. I find the riding position great for my frame. I, I can't see many people uh, wanting to move the foot pegs to get them 14 millimeter high and four millimeter back, which you can by just relocating them. But you can raise the seat by 15 millimeters as well, which gives a bit more leg length if you want it. So it's 810 millimeters is standard. Take out a bit of plastic, lift it up, and it's 825 millimeters. Personally, I really love being able to get my feet down firmly planted. Uh, I, I can even stand up and get my bum out of the seat slightly on this. And on some of the steep, gravelly, and muddy tracks we did as part of this launch, I was really pleased not to be on my own tall S1000XR, even when I was riding this on my own. The semi-active suspension is very good, if not quite perfect. It's definitely doing a lot of work to keep a controlled ride, either, even under heavy braking. It's over harsh bumps, like that long run of repeating overbanding on the M6 going south from Birmingham. That it feels a bit crashy, it just starts to get a bit kind of tiring, like knock, knock, knock. Still, if compromises were made to get it handling so well for spirited back road riding with or without a pillion, then I do reckon it was absolutely the right move. 
The brakes are good, if not sharply powerful, like I've kind of come to expect from a lot of bikes now. They'll stop you, no bother. But they do need a bit more of a pull than maybe you'd think, especially as there's now a radial master cylinder paired to those radial semi-monoblocks. The dash, well, Yamaha says it's designed to inspire a fighter jet cockpit. There also seems to be a lot crammed into the left dash, but not much that I need to see big on the right. If I had the option to display the riding modes bigger on here, I'd have been a bit happier. They prove fine to read in bright sunlight despite it being a negative display and with the sun behind me. Uh, and when you're riding in the rain, they're absolutely fine. But if you, if you pull away with rain already on them, it doesn't seem to get blown away. So you need to give them a quick wipe to be able to clearly see some of the smaller text on there. The controls are okay. One grumble is just down to muscle memory in that most bikes have the headlight flasher where Yamaha puts the mode button. So I'm forever cycling through the menu when I want to flash the main beam. I haven't had the chance to ride this in the dark properly yet, but we'll have a closer look at these cornering headlights and all the other details of the bike in the next video. So if you hit subscribe and the notification bell, make sure you won't miss that. The heat grips are really powerful with more control than you need having 10 steps. They're a bit fiddly to activate while you ride as you have to scroll to the location on the screen, press the wheel in, scroll to the setting, then press again. Too often I find myself scrolling to something else as I try and do it. And most of this stuff is pretty minor grumbles though, and what people come to the MT-09 and Tracer platform for is, of course, that engine. And yes, it's really good in most situations. 117.3 brake horsepower, it makes about 4 bhp more than the last model at the same 10,000 rpm. It's also making 4 pound foot more of torque at 68.6, and it's doing that at 7,000 rpm, which is 1,500 sooner than the old model. It's gone up 42cc to do that with a longer stroke, but this is Euro 5 and it sounds bloody brilliant as well. There's a real how to this and the up and down quick shifter just makes it sound awesome. That's some proper problem solving by the engineers given the emission restrictions. The fueling's really good. I only noticed a little choppiness when rolling off in first in the most aggressive riding mode one and there's only the faintest of hunting in second gear when you're rolling along at a slow speed. Overall, it works brilliantly, being a proper blast to work hard on twisty back roads, but strong enough to pull from about two or 3,000 revs in top when you can't be bothered to change. All I did find was that the motor can feel like it kind of runs away a touch if you're loading it up with a heavy throttle. I noticed it most with hell on the back when I was winding it to the stop. So you kind of wind it on and you're waiting for the bike to catch up. If you hit the right revs as you back off the mix, it just seems to lean off just to the right amount to give you the feeling of a slight surge when you're expecting things to slow down. I've seen it in other bikes. It's definitely not a problem. You just get used to the way it feels. And even though this is a proper ride-by-wire bike now, rather than using throttle cables down to uh, a potentiometer mounted just above the throttle bodies, this doesn't ever feel like it's giving an unnatural or like managed power delivery. Well, until you uh, put it into riding mode four, then it's like turning off one of the spark plugs. Where the engine isn't the best choice is on the motorway. Now, Alan Miles commented on our Facebook page that he was thinking of selling his FJR 1300 for one of these and he wanted something smaller. So while it proved brilliant in many ways, you just can't expect the turbine-like smoothness of a four-cylinder in a triple set. It's just something to be aware of. It's exciting, it's characterful, it's punchy, but it's not silky. But that's not a, that's not a criticism of this layout. I just wouldn't choose this if I was gonna be doing mainly motorway work. With the panniers on, this weighs 230 kilos, which is only three kilograms more than the 2018 model, and that's impressive as there's the semi-active suspension gubbins and the stronger steel subframe. That's what means you can now carry a top box and panniers at the same time. Obviously you could have done that before, but it's homologated to only carry one or the other. It's also why you've got a load capacity of 193 kilograms, which is 26 kilos more than the 2018 model. Now take away the 155 kilos or so that Helen and I weigh, and we can safely add another 38 kilos of chocolate, crisps, and spare pants. Now a year or so back when I reviewed the BMW F900XI, I said that it had the potential to be a tracer beater. I still think that bike should be on your shortlist, but by the time you get it up to the spec of this 12,202 pound bike, you'll have spent about 12,260. And you'll only have semi-active suspension on the rear. It's also less powerful, which wouldn't be a disaster, but you'll notice it on two up mountain rides. And yes, it's less exciting. The panniers are included on this bike, and for now, the one I have here is bog standard, except for the top box, which adds £79.70 for the mounting plate, then £150 for this 39 litre case, and £36.20 for the backrest. There is a 50 litre case 
for £213, which you'll probably see on here next time you see this bike. And to be honest, those prices aren't really that bad. It looks like it's a shad luggage design, though I do need to check that. Uh, and similar size panniers without the Amhar branding from there are about the same price. So there's a lot more to come about this bike, so I hope I'll see you here again soon. And if you're a Bennett's Rewards member, I might get a chance to meet up sometime you know, in the UK. But as a touring machine, I've got to say that while it's not the best bike for autobahn touring, if it comes to exploring back roads and potentially tricky inclines and surfaces, I've never had as much fun or felt as confident on a bike as I do on this, whether Helen's on the back or not. Get a test ride booked sharpish. You won't be able to hear it, but then it will start flashing red, and then you know you're on. <laughs> Pull it right out. When we're going down here, I'd have it out like that. Yeah. Um, so it no, it doesn't matter. I'll ask them. I don't, you know, because it's only a video of us, oh. so we'll have it. And I quite like that it'll be showing how we did stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, so to turn it off, press. So put that into that corner. Yeah. So don't press and hold it. Just put it there. And they'll do the same thing to turn it off. Don't press and hold it in. It. Are we going again soon? No, it could be a while. Oh. Well, but it's such a cool. I love it here because it doesn't look like England at all. Yeah. All right, but it doesn't look like the UK. Yeah. Such a beautiful place. There's picnic spots all round it. Yeah. No, it's cool. Is it working? You've got to give it time. So you know you've started it record? Yeah. Smile for you! <laughs> <laughs>